My name is Shana Labaskahni. I'm an audiologist at the Ear Institute in Eros. We are discussing hearing protection, hearing health, and bringing some awareness to uh, the World Hearing Month. The early signs of hearing loss, specifically in young people, would mainly be if they start doing poorly in school. Usually the teachers picks up on this and they refer the child to us for a hearing test. Um, if they ask for repetition a lot, saying, sorry, what did you say? If they increase the volume of the television or of the phone or any kind of uh, device, that can also be an indication. The main causes of hearing loss, specifically in young children, are noise exposure, ex being exposed to excessive amounts of noise or loud music. Uh, genetics also play a role. Maybe they are born with a hearing loss or they develop a hereditary uh, hearing loss over time. Then also things like um, autotoxicity, many drugs or medication that they have to use for specific um, illnesses can be autotoxic to their hearing. Loud music and um, permanent use of headphones can definitely um, cause a noise-induced hearing loss. This is if they are exposed to this loud music for a prolonged and excessive time. This can cause damage to the hair cells. And if there's damage to the hair cells, there's no way of regenerating these hair cells. And it can lead to a permanent hearing loss. One of the main warning signs is definitely tinnitus. That is when you hear a high pitched or high frequency ringing sound inside your ears. And this can be accompanied by a hearing loss usually. Uh, the other things is when you ask for repetition a lot, ask for people to repeat themselves and struggling to communicate or really follow the conversation in specifically a noisy environment. So these are one of the main, few of the main things that are of early warning signs. There is a difference between noise-induced hearing loss and age-related hearing loss. Noise-induced hearing loss is caused by a prolonged and excessive exposure to noise or loud sounds. Uh, this, like I said, can cause a uh, noise-induced hearing loss causing damage to the hair cells in the cochlea. Usually this affects your high frequencies first. Um, and it's usually with people that are exposed to, say for instance, a lot of shooting or hunting or working with heavy and loud machinery. Age-related hearing loss is something that happens over a long period of time. Um, usually it affects both ears and it affects your low frequencies as well as your high frequencies. So when it comes to your hearing health and taking care of your ears, with regards to how many times you need to clean them, I definitely don't think that you should clean them often. Um, I always say the ear is a self-sustaining organ, so it basically cleans itself. If you really feel like there's a lot of wax inside my ear or my ear is blocked, I would recommend that you first use wax oil or sweet oil. You can buy it at Diskim or Clicks or the pharmacy. And you just drop a few drops inside your ear, it softens the wax and then usually it comes out naturally. If it still feels blocked after that, you definitely need to go to your local doctor or your local audiologist and they can remove it via water with a syringe. I would say um, using Q-tips is very bad for your ears, so that's definitely a true statement. Um, all that the Q-tips does is it just pushes in the wax deeper inside your ear which can cause the eardrum to rupture or damage. And in some cases, the wax builds up, makes a wax plug, and it becomes very hard. And then it's very difficult to remove, and in some cases, also very painful. So there is a few risks of um, ear wax buildup. If you leave the wax inside your ear too long and it builds up and blocks the ear, it can definitely cause a hearing loss, obviously, because you won't be able to hear properly. Also, the wax can become impacted and cause an infection or fungal growth. And in some cases, it can also cause some dizziness. So mainly if you feel like your ear is blocked or there's any pain or you can't hear properly because of the wax, I would definitely recommend that you go to the doctor so that they can remove it, like I said, with a syringe with water. There is a couple of daily habits that you can incorporate into your life to protect your hearing. Um, the main one is using hearing protection 
um, if you know that you are going to be exposed to very loud sounds or noises th within the day. Uh, the other one is not to listen to music or very loud sounds at a high intensity or a high volume. Uh, try to keep it moderate and then also keeping a healthy diet, healthy lifestyle um, and this will increase the health of your hair cells in your cochlea. The best way to protect the hearing if you specifically go to clubs or listen to loud music or maybe go to a concert is obviously to wear hearing protection but with young people it's usually an unpopular opinion so other ways that you can try and prevent and protect is um, try not to stand too close to speakers um, try and limit the time that you are exposed to that loud noise and take breaks in between noise cancelling headphones definitely help prevent hearing damage it cancels out all the noise around you and therefore your need to increase the volume will be less and therefore it does protect your hearing. If you can maintain a good healthy lifestyle with, throughout your life, this can definitely prevent you using ototoxic medication maybe in the future. Ototoxic medication can definitely cause damage to your hair cells and therefore a hearing loss. Hearing loss is very common all over the world. Therefore, take care of your ears and maintain your hearing health. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms and keep yourself informed.